My name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm the Commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And the theme of our show is Structural Engineering for Students and More. And as my guest, I have Connie Collin, Kelly, not Collins, Kelly, Connie Kelly, and she's the Electric Chair Chicago Section of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Thank Education for being on Chair. Education Thanks Chair. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you for being on my show. And it's Connie Kelly. Right. Yeah, thank you very much. And you know, the redheads always give me problems there. <laughs> my wife is a redhead. <laughs> and, and, and she sings with the Irish singers. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, she sings so good that I booked her for my wake. <laughs> and I also have Bob Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Frank. Bob is a structural engineer and he's a STEM activist. What is a STEM? STEM is uh, an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. And math, STEM. And now uh, we're going to talk, before we get into structural engineering, we're going to talk about FIRST Robotics. Now, Bob, what is FIRST Robotics? Well, that was, is a design competition for high school students uh, that was created by an engineer entrepreneur by the name of Dean Kamen. Dean Kamen is the inventor of the first portable kidney dialysis machine, but people may know him more for the invention of the Segway mobile transport. You know, those two little two-wheel bikes. Ones he, you dodge in Grand Park. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he made so much money, he decided he needs to give it back to the profession and celebrate engineering. And with that money, he created something called the FIRST Robotics Robotic. Competition. FIRST is another acronym. It stands for First, inspira for inspiration, recognition for science and technology. And I find it kind of interesting. There's no engineering <laughs> in it. But when you build these robots, it's, it's not science. It's it engineering. Is. Now, Bob, you say there's activities that our students could get involved here in Illinois or maybe throughout the United States? Well, actually, through the world. Through the world? The, the, fir the first robotics competition is this competition where the students, high school students, have to design a robot and each year they create a game that the robots actually have to play. And each year, they, uh, it's amazing the games they come up with. The one I found interesting about six years ago, that the robots actually had to shoot baskets. Oh, basket players, and, basketball uh, players. And, uh, yeah, the robots were the basketball <laughs> players. And then a co another year that the robots actually had to sh sh shoot throw frisbees. Oh, interesting. And uh, each year the, um, the robot competition takes place in regional competitions throughout the country here in Chicago. It's usually the first April in, um, uh, of the month in, uh, at the University of Illinois. And I like to call it Chicago's version of March Madness. <laughs> now, now, our schools here in the Chicagoland area can get involved in this kind of activity. Yes. Now, how can they get involved, uh, Connie? Well, they can go to the website for FIRST Robotics. And it's not just high school students. There are specific competitions aimed at, uh, that are for the elementary schools and even younger. So you look up and see what group you're in, and it tells you how to get involved. I see. So, so Bob, so, and let's say they need help. They need a mentor to help them in this activity. What can they do? Well, they can contact the website. And a lot, a lot of them, um, you know, have engineers that they've worked with in the past that help them build these uh, robots. And it's just amazing to see these robots play this game uh, that's created every year. And they only actually get six weeks to build the robot. Six only six yeah. weeks to build. They announce the competition and, and the, the, what the game that, that the robots have to play. And then um, in April, the robots play this game and uh, they select the winning um, team or teams, and then they go to compete in the uh, world competition. And the competition has become so big that there's now two regions. Last year it was held, I think, in Houston and one in Detroit. Interesting. They can also contact the local engineering societies, like IEEE has electrical engineers. Uh, the mechanical US, engineers. The mechanical engineers Manufacturing engineers. Manufacturing, uh, computer scientists and ACM. 
So there, there are a lot of people that are willing. You just have to let them know you're needed. And also Lego, is Lego involved too? Yes, Lego's involved because with the younger students, they have a competition called uh, the first Lego League. And the uh, students <laughs> have to build a robot around, I think it's called the Mindstorm uh, uh, device. And the, um, software. the software. And then the uh, add on to that is the construction of Lego uh, bricks. And then they have also a game that the, um, or activities that the uh, robot has to uh, uh, play on this playing field. And that usually takes place here in Chicago or in the suburbs in uh, January. So uh, schools, uh, the teachers out there, or the students, as they want to get involved in this uh, first robotic activity, uh, uh, they could, uh, as uh, Connie mentioned and as Bob mentioned, uh, look uh, up on the website for the engineering associations and they'll be happy to assist you in maybe finding a mentor for you to participate in this uh, first robotic uh, activity. Now, after the robot, we're going to talk about Bob Johnson's favorite subject. Okay. Structural engineering. Yeah, Bob Johnson is a structural engineer. He graduated from IIT, the yes. Illinois Institute of Technology here in Chicago. Yes. And Bob Johnson is one of the experts here in the Chicagoland area, maybe the United States in structural engineering. And he's going to explain the different activities that the students could get involved with in some of the, our activities that we have during uh, engineering week come in February. So Bob's going to, do we have many structural uh, skyscrapers here in Chicago or what kind of uh, structural buildings do we have here in, in, in Chicago? Well, people don't realize it, but you know, we revere our Chicago architecture. Yes. But Chicago is the center of engineering and structural engineering. And we don't, I don't think, spend enough time talking about all the engineering achievements that came out of Chicago. The first skyscraper was invented here by a famed civil structural engineer. Um, now, now I'm having a, a mind <laughs> meld uh, uh, on it. Um, but he did build a, a skyscraper. Yes. Uh, and how tall was it? Ten, 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 um, ten stories. Or ten a walk story. up in my neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's just embarrassing. Uh, it'll, co it'll come to me. Um, Three in the morning. It'll come, it'll come to me. And, uh, but uh, after that skyscraper, we started building other skyscrapers. New York s surpassed us, but eventually we had the um, tallest um, skyscraper. In, and we still have the tallest all steel skyscraper, the uh, Willis Sears Tower. That still remains the world. And that's so what, 114 stories? Uh, no, 110. 110 stories. And, and how many tubes? There, uh, I've got a model back here. We can show it. There's the model right there. You said, um, you talked about the tube. Fosler Khan, the famed yes. structural engineer. William LeBaron Jenny. I knew it would come <laughs> to me. Was the inventor of the uh, skyscraper. The first skyscraper, 10-story building. Well, here we have nine boxes, nine tubes, and the renowned late structural engineer Fosler Khan came up with this concept of bundling nine buildings together to create a super strong building. And to the, till to this day, this is the, still the world's tallest all steel building. Now, Bob, how could our kids get involved in the competition? Because you mentioned uh, when we're talking that IIT has a competition every year. Yeah, IIT um, for the past 40 years has a bridge competition where high school physics students have to build and design a bridge and it's to extremely tight specifications. Um, the span, where they're going to apply the loads and uh, those, uh, they bring their bridges to IIT in January. It's usually on a Tuesday night and the bridges are tested to destruction. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody is injured, yeah. and actually destroy them in a glass cage. So when they when they break apart, nobody gets hurt. So so you and Connie are going to demonstrate one of these uh, projects that was um, designed in one of your competition. Well, not I not today here, oh, okay. but I'm just going to show oh, them uh, with right. regards to some of these models how bridges stand up and what those models have to do. The students have to think about how the forces 
are transmitted in a bridge. Okay, let me uh, walk and I'll let Connie and you uh, demonstrate. Okay, here we're going to do one of the first simplest demonstrations. I do this with children, and I give a, a child this bridge, a slab bridge, and it's just a piece of paper. And it's a bridge. And it's a bridge. Uh, we're going to put it on our support here, okay. Let's and see. we're going to put our weight on it. Put the weight on it, uh, Connie, and you're going to see it's going to fall down. So we give this to a child, and we say, this is your bridge. So let me see, all, all, all that you did here on, on the demonstration, you put this right here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and can't, can't, the can't bridge collapses. Collapses. Okay. There is something you can do, you can, something you can do with the uh, bridge. Same to, material. Same material to hold up the bridge. Okay. See, here was my, my sheet of paper, and by folding it, and creating little triangular structures, which are triangles are the strongest structure. And it's also deep. Okay. okay. Move back a little bit. There you go. Can you put it on there? See if it'll stand it. And there we do it. Okay, you go once. Now, how many can you put on there before it collapses? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, one. Two. Okay. Two. Two. Okay. Sometimes we get three. Crush okay. your fingers. Press. Let's see if we can do okay. it. Three. Mm, move it over. No. No. Sometimes, uh, uh, <laughs> you, sometimes you can get three. Well, let me try. Let me see. Let me see if if I could get three. Okay, Connie. Okay, uh, stand back now. Okay. Here, here. Okay. Let me see. Now let me uh, let me concentrate it here. Okay. I got one, okay. Now it depends on how you load it, right, Bob? Yeah, you got to make sure you two. two. Okay, now this is the, the test. starting to go. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> let's see if number three could do it. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. Sometimes so you can two. get three. Two, two. Okay. Okay. That's one of the demonstrations yeah. we show children yeah. how how important shapes yeah. are. Two. This this shape okay. with the triangles okay. and the depth. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, so so this is one demonstration that you have that you could show the kids how to build a bridge, and 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 and, and with a sheet of paper they could fold it and build a bridge to hold a certain amount of weight. And you don't even have to have a fancy fixture. You can put two stacks of books and put it between two stacks of books, if that's what you have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Here we have another bridge. And um, you can see the cables here. Yes. Okay, load it up, Connie. Stand back a little bit. Stand back so you can see the bridge. Okay. Okay, one. Put okay. that in there. And put that in there. Two. Two. Now, I'm going to be careful on this because you can already see that the strings have slackened up and the bridge is sagging. Okay, it's sagging. And, and, and you see what's happening to these yes, cables. Yes, yes, yes. The cables aren't really holding up the bridge. Yeah, there's so no tension on it. There's, there's, no, there's no tension. No tension. So this explains to the children the importance of tension and compression. So we take the loads off. We're going to take the same bridge. Same bridge. Okay. And we're going to flip it over. Okay. Okay. Same bridge, just flipped flip it over. over. Okay. Now we're going to load it up in the center. Go okay. ahead, Connie. Keep on loading. Keep on loading. And you notice here, instead of the strings that were in compression above, now they're in tension. This is really tight. And that can now hold up the bridge. So this shows how important or how forces work in the bridge because the load comes down here, comes down this post, and then back up here. I can take the same bridge, and this is kind of a neat experiment with the children. Take the uh, platform away and let's move it away. Okay. And give me the two uh, w um, supports here. And now, these are like abutments now? These are the abutments. But the, we're end, gonna, the end of a bridge. bridge but we're they gonna, call them abutments. But we're going to make this a cantilever. Okay. 
And, and a cantilever, if the kids are in first, second, third grade, is that the cantilever is cantilevers over. We're over, and there's no support underneath it. Now, we're going to put the bridges, the, the support here and here. And now I'm going to tell, tell Connie to do something and ask her. And this, this is what I asked to the children. We're going to take this block and put it on the end of the bridge. But before I do that, is it going to stand up or fall down? Uh, well, I, I would <laughs> say I think it might fall down. Yeah, you think it might fall down? Yeah. There's three blocks on that side. Yes, let's see. Put it on there. Oh, no, All that's right. good. It's still standing. still standing. We got three bricks on this side, okay. and, and we only got two bricks on this side. Okay. So what's happening here? Level, it even itself out. On well, the as I explained to children and uh, any student, let's say, past fourth grade who understands math, yes. it's all... Uh, well, all you know, kids pass in one first grade understands math, math. too. Yes. So all of this is simple math. Okay. This is 10 feet. Let's say it's 10 feet, yes. and I've got two bricks. Okay. So it's 10 times 2 is 20. 20. Okay. On this side, that one's 10 feet, or actually yes. a little less than 10 yes. feet. Uh, well, let's say 10 feet. 10 feet times one brick is, is 10. 10. This one here is about three feet away. Okay. So we got two bricks that's at three feet away. So that's two times three, three, six. and then plus 16. 16. So 16 is um, less, less than, than 20. 20. Let's see what happens here if I add another one here. <laughs> it's still standing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's less than 20. It's still less than 20 then because I've got three bricks. Uh, three bricks times three feet is 19. 19. And then I got um, the one out here that's 10, that's 19. Now, take that same brick, put it over there, and Connie, hold it up by the underneath. Now it's going to tip. It's yes, deflecting. Yes. Okay, or, if I, or the other thing I can do is just move this over a little bit, put that one there, let it go. It's still less than 20, but if I put that one there, it's going to tip. So this shows the importance of math in the design of a cantilever. And the counterweight. And the counterweight back. on the back. And, and have they ever seen a, on a construction site where they have a, a crane? Bob, they use yeah. counterweights too? Yeah, you see these big tower cranes that are on buildings? Yes. You'll see on the end of it a huge weight. Yes. And then the crane can boom out yeah. and as a big, yeah. big cantilever. Yeah. And uh, in the cab, the, in, the uh, crane operator has to make sure yeah. that with regards to the weight he's picking up doesn't exceed yeah. the capacity of that, that crane. Yeah. And, and have you ever seen a high rise where that the crane is in the center of the building, maybe in the elevator shaft yeah. going straight up? And, and you can see the, the arm come, come out. out. And then they have the counterweight in the back. Uh, the first crane, like they're doing it right now, was uh, started at the Cal Sandberg Village mm. on the corner of Clark and Burton. Mm. That was the first crane that came on the job, job. here in the Cal Land area, 1968. Here. Now we have some other models here. Can, Connie, can you go back and I'll get, get some of these other models. Uh, I show this one to show children how buildings in Chicago uh, stand up or fall down. Here we have a frame building, and all buildings do this unless we, <laughs> unless we strengthen them. So there's a couple of ways we can strengthen buildings. We can put in these walls, sheer walls. And uh, let me put a few walls in here. Okay, there. We put the walls in here. And now, Connie, can you blow on this for me? It's not going to move. So a lot of concrete buildings have these walls uh, buried in the inside of the building so the buildings don't do wobbling back and forth. Uh, in Chicago, engineers created other types of systems to brace buildings. Well, now one of the systems is to put bracing on the building like this and with these X's here the building is not going to move 
And the crowning achievement of that is uh, everybody knows what building this is, right? Uh, that's the, um, I would say that's the uh, uh, John Hancock building. That's the John Hancock building. And the X's there hold up the building. Okay, we got other uh, bridges and uh, st stuff that I talked with children about. Uh, Connie, let me uh, pick this up. Can you tell me what kind of truck this is? <laughs> a red one. A red one. <laughs> <laughs> with red, red stripes and, and uh, white stripes, huh? Okay, Frank. Okay. Give, give Connie the answer. Uh, Con Connie, you know, I, uh, <laughs> uh, as a civil engineer, we call this a concrete mixer. And when I go out and hear the public call this a cement truck, well, it's not a cement truck, it's concrete. Because, Bob, what is the, con what is the ingredients going to make in concrete? Well, when I talk to children, I'm actually able to pull out the, na the four ingredients, the four prime ingredients yeah. that go into this truck. And generally, the, the, mixture. The, 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 the mixture. It's like the engineer's cooking machine. Yeah. And the uh, kids will say rocks. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. the large. Yeah, that's yeah, the rock. Yeah. The uh, large aggregate. So, so they don't call this a rock mixer. No. Mixer, no, they don't call this a rock mixer. But I said, well, what do you? What, what's smaller than rocks? And you might find it on, on the beach. Pebbles. Pebble. So, yeah. What's smaller so than pebbles? Sand. 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 So we got the the large aggregate, the rocks. So you don't call it a sand mixer. mixer? No. No, you don't call it a sand. And then we need something to mix it up with. Water. 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 Clean okay. water. Okay, water. Okay. And now this is the one that the kids generally leave out. <laughs> what is the magic glue that glues the rocks and the sand and mixes with the water? What, Connie? I'm an electrical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> cement. 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 So this is not a, a cement. cement so we don't call it a cement mix mixer. It's a concrete, concrete mixer with the greenest of what? Rock, sand, sand water, water, and cement. cement. A concrete Cre mixer. mixer. So it mixes it up here. <laughs> and what's interesting about it, people don't realize it. As I say, this is the engineer's cooking machine because it actually bakes in here. With the water and the cement working together, it creates heat, and the, the concrete becomes warm. Yes. And, and when it gets warm and the cement and the water work together, the water disappears, glues the rocks and the cement together, and you get about 90 minutes yeah. before it becomes hard. Yes. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, like I said, it gives off heat. Yes. Um, you have to be careful that if you're pouring or placing the concrete in warm temperatures that the water doesn't evaporate yes. too quick. And because if it does, then the cement doesn't glue the rocks and the sand together. The classic case of that was uh, back, uh, what, 75 years ago, I think, or longer, is when they were building the Hoover Dam oh. out in the middle of yeah. the desert yeah. near Las Vegas. It's 120 degrees out there and they're placing the concrete and the, what to do because the concrete is not setting up yeah. properly. And they came up with the crazy idea the Hoover Dam is air conditioned. <laughs> they put pipes within the um, Hoover Dam and ran cold water within the dam to keep the temperature down in the dam. Vice versa, in the wintertime here in Chicago, if you watch these skyscrapers go up, they're actually placing the concrete in the middle of winter, yes. and it's 20 degrees out, or 10 degrees out. Yes. Well, the solution there is they heat the floor yes. below, Blow it. Yes. and then warm up the concrete, put blankets at the top to keep the yes. temperature uh, uh, in the concrete, and they're able to actually build these buildings in Chicago in the middle a winter. Winter. Yeah. Currently, the world's tallest building is the Burj Khalifa building in the United Arab Emirates. It's, I think, 2,718 feet. It's 2,000 feet of concrete and then uh, 700 feet of um, structural steel. Uh, that was designed by Chicago area architects and Chicago engineers. Currently on the drawing boards and currently coming up out of the ground, I think they're, I don't know if they're a third of the way up, maybe even higher, is the um, 
Kingdom Tower in Saudi Arabia. That will be the first tower to break one kilometer. It will be 3,200 feet tall, and that is an all-concrete building. Um, think about the Sears and the Hancock building. If you stack them uh, on top of one another, that still wouldn't come close to the, ta uh, the, ta the new tallest building that will be probably completed in 2020. However, in Chicago, we've got a few new tall buildings that are under construction. If you go down Wacker Drive, you will see the um, Vista Tower. That will be shortly become the third tallest building in the city. Third? Uh, oh. third tall. And if you look at it, I advise people to go buy it right now because you'll see the concrete structure. And remember what I talked about before with the shear walls? Yes. You'll see the shear wall exposed on the part of the building right now. When the building is finally completed, uh, that'll be an all-glass building, and you won't see the shear wall behind the glass. Interesting. Uh, now, but now is that building going to sway up on top? Like uh, all buildings sway. All buildings sway. Now, let's say I bring a, 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 a family from California, I think of the Sears Tower, and we're up on the top floor. Is it swaying up there? Yes. And how much is it swaying? Well, it's been designed in during a a windstorm, you know, a major windstorm yeah. to go about three feet either way. Three feet? Three feet either way. The rule of thumb engineers yeah. use is roughly the height of the building by about 500. Depending on the characteristics of the building, that can be 400 or maybe 800. But like take Sears Tower, 500, 1500 feet divided by 500 is three. Yeah. So it's three feet either way. The key thing for the engineers to achieve is not to feel the movement of the building. It might sway back and forth ever so slowly, but you won't feel it. But if it does this, wobbles back and forth like a tuning fork, very quick like that, you'll get seasick or feel it. So the engineer's achievement is trying to keep that movement slow enough <laughs> that you don't feel it. And a way to explain it again to uh, an adult is when you're in a plane going 600 miles an hour, you don't feel 600 miles an hour. When you land the plane or when you take off the plane, you feel that acceleration, which is a change in movement. So when you have a building going back and forth ever so slowly, that movement is ever, you don't feel it. But if it wobbles back and forth, that's a change in movement yeah. like that, real quick. And that's what you feel. Now, now, Bob, you talk about activities for students that they can participate, right? Yeah. Are there any uh, activities coming up in uh, uh, in the late 2018 or 2019 well, actually, where those kids could participate? Well, actually, right now, I don't know when this program will air, but October 13th, the Museum of Science and Industry has their huge uh, science works program. And that's every year? Every year. Okay. And then... Uh, we're getting ready to gear up well, right now, signing up teams for the Future City competition. Sign up so the students, the, the classroom, the teachers could sign up right now. now. It doesn't matter where they're at in, now. in Illinois, they could sign up for Future Cities. Right. So they, you hear this, it could be a public school, a Catholic school, a private school, or maybe a Boy Scout group. Right. Could even be a, ho a home school. Home school to participate in Future Cities. Yeah, they have until October 31st until. to sign up. And then as soon as you sign up, uh, you can start uh, assembling your city. And then usually about uh, December, they have to submit the essay and they have to su uh, submit the uh, computer program uh, that their city is based on. And then in fact, January is the, really the beginning of a lot of the competitions, yeah. whether it's either Future City, the IIT Bridge Competition, math the counts. Math Counts, the First Robotics Competition. There's a host of other programs. I just advise the listeners, just Google STEM Outreach or STEM Engineers Chicago, and you should find a host of engineering programs in the city, like Project Sincere or the Pre-College Chicago in science and engineering program. Um, again, there's a tremendous amount of programs out there. The problem is, is educating the public or getting the word out to the public. And that's why Connie and I are here with you. And I yes. want to just thank you yeah. because this gives us the opportunity to show the public that there are all these uh, yeah. programs. And I excuse if I've missed any of the programs <laughs> that are out there because it's a, 
All the colleges have special programs. Yeah. Triton, Oakton Community College, IIT, Northwestern. Lewis. Lewis, you name it. College they all have college. special uh, STEM programs. To help the kids in kindergarten through high school. High school. Maybe adults, huh? Any hey, adults? Everybody can learn. Well, yeah. Anyone can learn. Right. Now, what more other structural projects that you could uh, show well, the I got kids just this final one. I'm just going to tease oh, the public. What's it called? This is my model that basically shows to the public, okay. but primarily the adults, what brought down the World Trade Centers. Okay. And I'm just going to tease you right now. You're going to have to come to the IIT STEM Expo on February 23rd, and I'll give you the in, demonstration. In, in, two, in 2019. In 2019. Okay. And this just basically shows how the columns support the tower. And if you take out the floors, and the plane comes in and takes out the floors, it weakens up the column. And then what, what I show the, uh, the older kids, the formula that holds up the column. And the, the reasons for these numbers, and um, this, this simple demonstration, I've got two models here, but it, sh it shows what physically brought down the towers in terms of the structural engineering. So I invite the public to come uh, February 23rd There'll uh, be over 40 different groups with hands-on activities. activities. Where is it now? IIT Rice, Rice, Campus. Rice Campus in Wheaton. And you said 40 groups? There'll be over 40, 40 groups. groups. And there's a lot of make and take. Uh, there's a lot of hands-on get involved. But it, we don't sit there and lecture at the kids. It's hands -on come on in activities. here, get in here, and get your well. One of the signature events at that event is we give uh, a couple of kids a bucket of Legos, <laughs> and they have to build a skyscraper out of the Legos. Uh, but the kicker is, what's amazing, where are the Legos built on? They're built on a Lego earthquake shake table. Oh my God! And we <laughs> test the test the uh, the skyscraper to see if it can withstand an earthquake. Earthquake. And uh, it's amazing. Every once in a while, a child builds one that withstands the shaking. And, and it's a, it's amazing to see you know how they fall down. Yeah. yeah. But every once in a while, yeah. again. They've designed one properly that can ride out an earthquake. Yeah. You know, uh, my granddaughter goes, uh, she's in second grade, and one of the activities that they have, they have after school program, they have a Lego uh, program where they design uh, and build t different types of structures with Legos. Yeah. Oh, when you're talking about Legos, let me just throw out one other thing for the audience here. Uh, there's a, been a little publicity on it, but there is a new children's museum dedicated to children's construction toys. Where is that in? Woodfield. Woodfield? It's an unbelievable experience to see all these construction toys dating back to the 1800s. I, is that a museum up there? Yeah, it's a museum. Okay. I so, mean, just stuff that we grew up on. You know, Connie, didn't you have, you have an erector set? Yeah. And a chemistry a, set. Yeah, they have erector sets. You ever heard of Lincoln Logs? Oh, yes. They got Lincoln Logs there, Tinker Toys, Legos, uh, all kinds of toys. So, so we have Bob Johnson, and we have Connie Collins, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Collins, and 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 they are very interested in helping the kids, K through high school or even adults, to get an education and know about engineering. Now, and one thing I Triple E is doing, there's a program. And uh, Triple E is what? Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers at dozens of libraries within the Chicago area, metropolitan Chicago area, we've been giving grants to the libraries to put together kits that could become part of their lending collection. And if you go to the, um, if you just Google science kits for public libraries, you can see if your library is there. Um, we're limited by funds. If we get more donations, we'll give more library grants. But it allows you to take home stuff that the kids can play with at home. You sign out the kids like a like you sign out a book, and it's it's something fairly new in the area. Okay, so so here you got all kinds of programs, and they want the kids to get involved. They want the parents to know how to get their kids involved in engineering there throughout the Chicagoland area. So, Bob and Kelly, thank you for being on the show. To, uh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. To, to explain to the parents out there 
how to get their kids involved. And thank you very much. Yeah.